everyone. We are Girls Guts Glory. Thank you again for tuning in. Um, thanks to Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring this season and Johannes Plenio for some of our cool backgrounds. I know Rachel has her sweet moving background from James's RPG art on Patreon. Yeah. So we'll go, we'll all go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Kim Daugherty and I'm playing Daisy Gamwich, the changeling artificer. And we're playing at ninth level now. <laughs> you sure did. I'm Erica Fermina. Um, I am playing Leaf, your goblin druid. I'm Alice Gretchen and I'm playing Velada Nailo, your centaur bard. I'm Kelly Lendiangelo and I'm playing Jacques de Cougiols. Uh, for Bo Cleric. I'm Callan Coleman and I'm playing Rufus Rippard, your rock gnome wizard. And I'm Rachel Seeley, I'm your human DM, who wants to give me a recap of our last episode and get your advantage. <laughs> ah, it's oh, not working today. I'm do it. Okay. <laughs> I do the very I do very general recap. That's good, yeah. Basically, we are after dying and being in the afterlife we are now back in the real world but we're kind of zombies and um the, the still bad bad owl lady um oral oral yes oral is still out there still doing bad things and in order to take her down we have to take down five of these ice spires and we've taken down two so far in the last episode we actually went um to where Leaf grew up and we met Leaf's wonderful frog dad, but also Leaf's not so wonderful goblin dad. Um, but we were able to take down that spire. So we have two down now. Um, we have in our possession these like magical ice balls that can <laughs> help take us places we need to go. Uh, we've used one, we have four left. Um, and we have this spear that we got from Tamsin um, which has been able to be used to destroy the spires. And that's what Kelly has right now. So that's where we're leave leaving. That's where we left off. We just took yeah. the spire. Absolutely. Go ahead and mark down the advantage. Don't forget that you have it. I forgot last episode. Uh -huh. Like rip off a piece of paper, write advantage on it, and then put a D20 on it. You know what? That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. As someone who forgets all the time. I've had to resort to doing that. I want to buy little tokens that'll say like, I have advantage so I can set it out somewhere and I can see it. Or like I'm blessed or whatever. So when we last left off, you were in the middle of Black Bog, which is where Leaf is from. You got to meet Leaf's giant frog dad. And after destroying the spire and having a very tense and unpleasant interaction with Leaf's biological father, you went down to the tree where you had seen Leaf's frog dad before, and the frog dad brought you down into a very, very cramped and small for you hovel underneath the tree. And when you fell asleep, you heard the sound of tens and tens of tiny little frogs singing in the branches, <laughs> and you could see them coming out. You spend a long night there, and you can take a long rest, taking a nap. And when you wake up, it's a lot warmer, in fact, than it had been. And the ground sort of seeps around underneath you because it is mud once again. Now, unfortunately, you're all coated in mud and it is a very, it's a very slippery mud. But when you wake up, you open your eyes, all of you one at a time, staggered, and you see the giant frog on the opposite side of this cramped room. And you see all of his tiny little frog babies jumping off his back and climbing around in the branches and the, the, not the branches, but the root system that makes the ceiling of this place. And you see tiny, tiny little lights floating around. And Leaf, you, you know exactly what these are. And you're pleasantly surprised that the fireflies are back. It's taken a while, but they're back. Nature is healing. So you are all awake, cramped in this tiny space, covered in mud, but pleasantly warm for the first time in a while. Mud is also supposed to be a natural mosquito repellent, so I guess it's very good that we are coated. <laughs> where, 
Where are we going now? Uh, well, we have to find the next spire. Right. And, and I think these ice balls will help us get there. You remember the last time you threw one down, you cracked it like an egg, and the water fell from inside, and it opened a essentially a dimension door. What happened was you just thought of the closest ice spire and you asked for it, and it took you there. How's everyone feeling? Are we ready to go on to the next store? How are you uh, feeling? I, I feel good. I feel good. Uh, Leaf, is, is everything okay? Yeah, you? I'm actually feeling pretty good. Survived seeing my dad. Got to see my frog dad. You know, overall, yesterday was pretty successful, I would say. And now I'm covered so in mud, off. so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I like this area. I, uh, I wish I could have a picnic basket here. We could sit up a little, uh, you know, charcuterie board and eat together. But, you know. That does sound very lovely. Sounds real lovely, charcuterie. It has been a minute. <laughs> maybe once we're done with the spires. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Oh, I said maybe once we're done with the spires. Oh, yes. I could do with a little less undead in the lake, but... Oh, yeah, that's all. That's a big drawback, isn't it? <laughs> yes, so do don't worry. Thing? If we come here, we spend a week, I'll take care of it all. What do we all do with a little, little less undead? <laughs> Isn't that always the case? <laughs> uh, the two larger members of your party, that's Valara and Jack, you're starting to get very, very cramped. And having fallen asleep in this small place that is not the normal size of a place you'd be taking a nap, especially with the bunch of your companions here, you're starting to get aches in your joints and your neck is cramping up a little bit from pulling in. I'll be going out to, to greet the day. All right. I think I'll join you. I think, I think it's about time. Come on, Artemis. Time to go. Thank you, um, Robert. He turns around and focuses his one good eye on you, and he says, Arr. Arr. <laughs> You too. <Arr. laughs> <laughs> So one by one, you stagger out of this small little area up into the open space above where you were before, and you're greeted with early morning sun. It's beautiful out. And even though it is kind of chilly because of the time of year, it's definitely not as cold as it was yesterday. And you can see tiny little fireflies off ringing the lake, dipping in and out of the reeds, going into the forest around. And even though this is a very dark place, the bog is not beautiful. I mean, there's a bunch of dead trees everywhere and there's not much color here except for green and brown and that's kind of it. You had a long rest. Um, it's, it's still quite lovely. Brisk early morning, there's a very, very light fog hanging around. Should we crack one of those egg things? Make a quick, quick trip. Yes, is everyone ready to go then? Done. Yeah. Alright, who's got, who's got the egg things? I think I still have one. I think we all have one. We all have we? one. Yeah. That's right. Everyone but uh, Jacques. But then one. the sending stones with Valar and... I have a sending stone. And Daisy, alright. You should have four of those little teleportation. Oh, we each have one except for Jacques. All right. Would you, you like to crack yours? I keep worrying I'm going to sit on mine. Have a <laughs> burst ball. Do you want to crack yours then? Sure. That's a good excuse. All right. <laughs> cr cracking the ball. So, all right. So I just. Crack it, throw it down. Although, um, and you must to... think of this place that this we are fire. going to. Yes. Just yes. take me to where, take me to where I want to go. That was another song we did. Mm -hmm. Take me to where. Ooh. And I drop it on All right. 
Okay, you drop it on the ground where okay. it cracks along the side and this purpley swirling liquid starts to seep out and where it touches a door begins to form. Leaf behind you, you hear the croaking of your frog dad and all of his tiny frog children as they all come out from underneath the tree to say goodbye to you. You do notice, however, now that you no longer understand what they're saying, but Leaf, you definitely, you, f you know, you understand. There are some bonds that go beyond language. I'm and they're saying waiting. goodbye. Waving yeah. at them. They're saying so that they'll I'll miss you. I'll see you later. I'll be back. I There's just a when. chorus of ribbits. <laughs> and a door forms. And this door is different from the last. It took on a different shape entirely. It's large and square, and it looks like it's like a sandstone. And all of these blocky parts of it have these cutouts, these designs in it. It looks very, very old, but there's a door sitting in the middle of the mud right in front of all of you, and you only have a certain amount of time before it closes. All right, I'll go in first. Artemis, come with me. I thought. All right. So you grasp the handle, you pull it up, and once again, you see just straight down through the doorway what looks like a very familiar place. And when you step through, the horizon comes to meet you once again, and you're standing on flat ground. Makes you just a little bit seasick. Oof. Can you make a nature check for me? Yes. Or history. I'll let you do either. Well, I can't imagine it's good for either, but uh, eight or eight. Aha! Uh -huh. um, nice place. Or you think maybe, maybe you've been here? <laughs> no. You think maybe you've been here before, but yeah. you're not sure. Yeah. This looks familiar. Do you recognize it, Artemis? Artemis just looks around. I'll follow. Okay, I... oh, I'll follow Valara through the door. All right, one by one, you all head through the door. I'm assuming no one stays behind. And when the last person is in, you turn to look at the door, and it just whoosh, blinks out of existence, like it shrinks to a tiny dot and disappears. Everyone who didn't initially roll, roll either a nature or a history check for me. was so close. I have a 21 for nature. Okay. 17 for nature. And with my history, I'm usually not good at it, but I got an 18. Okay. It'll be a 10 for both. All right. Uh, Jacques, you've never been here before, but you've, you've read about this place. It's very tropical and beautiful. Um, it's an island pretty far away from where you are in the north. It, it's way further south, so you've, you've never had the chance to come here. But Valara and Leaf, with those rolls, you notice everything looks very, very familiar. And you remember a time when you were here at a huge temple, and you had to protect two people who you rather liked, and you eventually got to be members of a separate party of yours in a dream, but now you're here for real. Uh, is this where uh, the, the I fucked up with the root? No, the okay. no, no. This okay. is in the land of the living. This is okay. not, yes, yeah, here it's temple. This is the place, do you remember right the now? festival that was happening and you got into that, the airship that was shaped like a giant goldfish? Oh, yes. Who was it? Oh, yes, it's Who do we coming say? back. That, that was, was Lolan. Lolan. Yeah. Who Lolan. is the current seer? And Moe's. And Moe's. rabbit. Oh. Huh. Well, perhaps we will run in back into Lowen and Moe's. <laughs> Probably not Lowen, since she's the seer now. She's dead, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when you had been here before Sorry, I barely in... remember that episode <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those episodes where you were in 
what was essentially the dream version of a world and you were watching this person go through the throes of their death over and over and over okay. and you had to stop the cycle of their death okay so you're okay, here for real still dead. yeah they're still dead very much but they're not trapped in that cycle anymore mentally so what you see before you is a dirt path that's going through a jungle it's bright and vibrant green absolutely beautiful there are huge huge low ferns it's very humid here and you see tiny little dust motes floating through the air when you take a closer look you realize they're not dust motes it's huge chunks of pollen and you have just the faintest recoll recollection of those plants that you had to destroy that were popping out undead in the temple the plant zombies yeah Mm -hmm. Okay, it's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> slowly, <laughs> yep. But what you see is just a dirt path and thick jungle flora. Ooh, and QDM backdrop change. Mm -hmm. Liking. Okay. Um, <laughs> hmm. Okay, uh, to find an ice spire here. Interesting that nothing appears to be frostbitten. I catch mm -hmm. no drafts of cold, only warmth. It's very humid. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm just getting sneezy from all the, you know, dust and whatnot in the air. It's pollen. Oh, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to say it because I don't know if you knew it. <laughs> yeah, pollen. Leaf knows. Leaf knows about nature. I just consider it general allergies, you know, to life and things That's around fair. me. That's when fair. we entered um, Valara and Leaf, you were both uh, just staring around for a few minutes. Um, are you familiar with this area? You seem familiar. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we made a couple of friends here when we were in the afterlife. Um, One of them is a current seert. Mm-hmm. You say these things as if it's casual. I'm still fascinated. We've just simply had time to get used to our unusual circumstances. Yeah. Yes. They was... were the little pollen clump things. Oh, that's I... good to know. Thank you. Yeah, I would say like <laughs> I like to weird. touch things, so it's good you say it. Don't touch it. No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be careful of those, possibly. Oh, I knew this place looked familiar. That makes sense. Daisy, check your notes. You might have written it down. Oh, you know I always take notes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, can I do a perception check to see if I detect any, like, cold, a cold breeze from anywhere that might indicate which direction we should go to find an ice spire yeah you know what sure i'll let you do that okay Wait. oh well that won't be very helpful at 10 but <laughs> no it's just humid okay it, it feels it's it's very heavy the atmosphere here um and even though you can tell it's about midday there's a heavy sun streaming down there's a, a thick canopy above you and every once in a while a burst of a sunbeam will come through and light up the path ahead of you but mostly it's dark and heavy here there, does anybody uh, oh sorry i was going to ask if there's life like um birds squirrels things make a perception check yeah make a perception check okay <laughs> oh uh, well that's nine a nine okay <laughs> You have no idea. You just see pollen floating around and you see all these beautiful, large, vibrant plants. You see a couple of multicolored flowers here and there, oranges and bright purples and yellows, but you don't see any animals. I have... Would Calliope perhaps fly above the trees and see if there are any spires? Oh, yes, she can. Um, she does, she can't tell me but i could ask her um calliope and uh daisy pulls calliope out from her her coat just calliope um 
we're looking for one of those ice spires. Do you remember the ice? It's cold. It's it's tall. <laughs> and she she kind of nods. <laughs> Fly above the canopy. Look and see if you see one. And then when you come down, if you do, point us in that direction. Okay. All right. Go on then. All right. You see her flit up this tiny silver bird that catches the sunlight on her wings when she disappears straight up into the canopy. And a couple seconds pass. And finally you hear squawking (gasps) from a handful of sources. And bursting through the canopy above you, you see a calliope darting down back towards you and there's a cloud of three ravens that are following her. And it looks like they're trying to attack. <gasps> Can everybody make a perception check for me when you see this happen? 19. Okay. 15. 7. 19. All right. I think that's everyone but Daisy, who's so focused on poor Calliope. You all notice something is very off about these birds. They're missing feathers. And as they get closer, you notice some of them are missing eyes. Something's very wrong. They appear to be partially dead crows. (laughs) Can Daisy pull out her um, crossbow? Sure, yeah. We don't even have to get into initiative. Just we're going to go one at a time. You tell me what you're going to do. I'm going to take two shots mm-hmm. and try and try and hit them. Mm-hmm. All right, new dice, new dice, new dice. <laughs> oh, that's better. Um, that will be a twenty-four to hit. Oh, that'll hit. Do your damage. Okay. Ooh, uh, eleven points of damage for the first one. All right, you send a crossbow bolt flying at one of the crows that's following your poor baby. There's three total. And it goes through the air, bing, and you hear the body drop into the path ahead of you. I'm taking aim at another one. All right, roll the hit. Oh, 16. That'll hit. Do your damage. Seven. Seven points. You shoot another crossbow bolt and it goes flying straight into the throat of another bird that's following Calliope and it falls to the ground dead. There's one more and you see the two Calliope and this bird zipping around above your heads. All right. Who wants to take the next action? Could I cast Mage Hand and like grab its neck midair? I don't... Is that just, yeah? Mm. Over here. More <laughs> That's very. Oh, how how high up how high up is it? This last. They're crow. changing. That's the problem. They're darting all over, and they're birds, so they're very fast. Um, Magic missile. It, if um, if you just to out no, there. If you if you want to do that, I I will let you. But you're gonna need to make a dex check. Okay. See if you can grab him. Okay. Left, right. Yeah, there's one left, and he's he's chasing. Because I kind of want an alive one to to examine where this where he's, this trifecta came from. Okay, so Dex check would be seventeen. Yeah. All right. Why not? You manage to wait, and then with a mage hand, it's this beautiful glowing blue ethereal hand that comes out of nowhere, and it just and you you have a bird caught in the air, and it's struggling in the mage hand and squawking. You pull it down. Make a perception check when you're looking at this bird. Bird. Or nature. I'll let you do either, actually. Ooh, okay. I'll do a nature check for 21. All right, with a 21, you're looking at this bird. It's most definitely undead. You can tell. It's rotting. There's a lot of nasty stuff going on that I won't go into detail with. It's humid out. We know enough. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, What you do notice, however, every time it opens its beak to make this gargling sound you see its breath i aim it the other way (laughs) so it's (laughs) what i mean is it's not like a toxic cloud i mean when you're in the middle of like 
a, a snowstorm and you see your breath coming out of you oh. and where you feel it you, you feel cold coming from its mouth oh first of all you're a very very rude raven secondly where did you come from I'm uh, struggling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Daisy, I, here is one alive. I'm holding it. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps you could investigate. A, a, a leaf, you know things about nature. Perhaps you could check. It. I, it's cold as if on the inside. Does anyone, Do you see, does anyone else see the breath coming out of this here rude yeah. crow? Does anyone speak crow? I can speak to animals, but uh, they do not speak to me. They just understand, but That's I don't know if this so I could talk to Did... it tomorrow. I didn't, I didn't fix up that spell today. And I actually have Perhaps a question. You... When you do, like, preparing ritual spells, that's like when you first wake up? Okay. Yeah, it's in the morning. Okay. I always forget that I can do that <laughs> as a druid. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, if you want me to, I can turn into a bird of some sort and take a look around. Well, it sounds like it's dangerous up like, there. Not to say I'm a big one. Well, uh, let's see what Calliope has to say before, before we Agreed. send you up there. Um, Calliope is in my hands, kind of shaking. And I ask her, Calliope, did you see an ice fire? You get back impressions that she didn't have time to look. Oh. That there's a huge flock above the canopy. And she just barely made it out. Oh, it's okay, darling. It's okay. It's okay, darling. Oh, I'm afraid there's a big flock of these uh, undead birds up there. Um, it might not be a good idea for you to go up there, Leaf. I say we continue to explore. But what if I'm something it. really big? Yes, but it seems that there's quite a few of these. I just don't want you to get bit. And are they going towards something or are they fleeing away from something else is what I'm curious to know. Also, not to be that person, but um, this this is a very thick canopy. So if you go up and something happens and you cannot find us again, it uh, I, I don't think we want to lose you, potentially leave. I think that we'll find other ways. All right. I'd rather not send you in there alone. I'm, I'm going to keep this root crow with us. And I, I fashion like a piece of cloth to make like a little like falcon hood for this <laughs> undead crow. Just because I'm not, I you, I don't know, like if, if birds of a feather flock together, we want to know which way the crows are going, maybe we can, I don't know, maybe it could come in handy in the future, I don't know. <laughs> but, are you keeping it in your mage hand? Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm holding it in my actual hands right now, and I'm, I'm gonna let my mage hand kind of vanish, and uh, I put the little hood on, and okay. I'm gonna just hold it with me right for now even though it's very like a squirming chicken with a hood. Uh -huh. it very much is a squirming, <laughs> a squirming chicken yeah it, it <laughs> wants know, to um, leave i but have an idea that might be kind of crazy but i do have this really cool spell at my sleeve that i could cast it and put one of you in it send you up and nothing nothing will harm you and then i can bring you back down if you wish Put you in the bird. No, no, sorry. I, I uh, have left out some very important information. Um, it's like, um, uh, yeah, what's it, what's it, how, uh, how do you say? Um, like a ball. It's like a big giant ball. Like a zorbing ball. Yes, it's, some call it, um, ot uh, I guess I cannot say it. Octituke resilient sphere, <laughs> if that sounds familiar. Uh, but they put you in the sphere, and they, sh they can send you up, and it's, it's only a last minute, but um, if you want to, you know, go up in a big ball. Nothing can come in, and nothing can come out. You just glance. Do you, think it's, do you think it's going to get the whole flock on us, though? There is a likely consequence. Uh, yes, perhaps. 
Like, can it be uh, popped with a bird's beak? No, so that's the interesting thing. Nothing physical energy spell can pass through it at all. I can fly, but you know, I like to use it sparingly because you know, crickety bones and such. Now, if I fly, you know, same thing's gonna happen to me as the Calliope. Unless I was in a ball, but if I'm in a ball, I don't need to fly. You can fly me. No, I don't think the, no. I mean, the sphere is weightless, so you can move it around, but I think that you would need to fly with the ball. Ah! So would you want me to turn into like a bird and fly up and then in come the back down? Yes, I think that somebody who can fly or or make the use of that uh, is the way to go. I Maybe. can turn into Why? a giant. Why don't you do it? Huh? Why don't you do it? You know, you're up for it. You're young. Yeah. Strapping I young like man. I don't take advantage of, of my magic enough sometimes. Yeah. Well, I definitely don't, that's for sure. Sometimes I forget I have it because my voice is so magical. It is, though. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Wake it up. Um, uh, then I will I will wait for you to turn into a bird because if you cast it before I do that, you cannot do any sort of magics. Um, very strong. It's resilient. I know things can't <laughs> be, but can I do yeah. magic in it? You could do magic, Nothing. I think, on yourself, but not like yeah. there's no way to send it out. So it's like Liaman's tiny hut where nothing can come in, but nothing can go out. You can't cast spells out of it, but spells can't come in it. But I could do my wild shape in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but not that it really matters. It's a warm mm -hmm. ball. Um, I think I might do. Hmm. I think I might um. Uh, uh do this, and Leaf's gonna like uh bring his little arms in, and then do this, and he's gonna turn to a giant eagle. Nice. <laughs> All right. Very, very handsome and strapping. You now see a beautiful eagle with a magenta pointed goatee and a beautiful mustache. Very regal. That is beauty, if I've ever seen one. Uh, okay, it's time for Spear. All right, let's go. <laughs> I've never done this spell before. I'm excited to use it. So All right. I cast Oli, OT, Ori Lux. I think it's maybe how you say it. Ori Lux Resilience Spear. <laughs> Okay. You what does it look like, Kelly? What tell me what um, you think it looks like? It says a shimmering force in What you think it looks like? How does oh, Jacques okay. how does Jacques um, make it? Make it your own. Yeah, yeah. No, Jacques would uh Jacques would cast it and it would be like flaky layers of croissant. Um <laughs> in a big bowl. Like big <laughs> so it's like kind of shimmering like gold leaf paper that kind of goes in a ball. Yeah. I was picturing literally a ball croissant, and I was like, <gasps> yes. yeah, clear ball, clear ball croissant." Yes, <laughs> amazing. It's only vaguely crescent shaped as well, just vaguely. All right, leave. You are surrounded by this beautiful, shimmering, gold leaf esque ball that you can see out of. And everyone else, you see this shape form around leaf. Um. Oh. Uh give like a nod to Jacques and then I'll start to fly up. Okay. You fly up and you crest over the top of the canopy. These beautiful, huge dark green leaves giving way as you go above the treetops. And a bunch of things happen all at the same time. You notice very distinctly a large town dead ahead. It looks like from here, the exact same place you were in the dream. It had a beautiful open space in the center and rings of the village. You can see smoke coming from it. It's not too far away. It's just a couple minutes walk, basically dead ahead. But at the same time that you see that, you yourself are seen. And all at once, the bubble is pummeled by about 15 bodies of crows that are flying right at you and they just catapult themselves against the sphere over and over and over and over and you see 
as this happens, in a flurry, like gunfire, just they're starting to leave feathers behind and little smears on the outside <laughs> of the sphere. Um, can I try to scare them off with like a big eagle screech or something? Roll an intimidate check for me. <laughs> what? That's a charisma, right? I, yes, it is. Oh, um, that's a seven. <laughs> I may be oh. big, but I'm not a very charismatic eagle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, underneath the treetops, down below, all of you hear this, like, patter, 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 up above you. You can't quite tell what it is, but something's happening. So, Leaf, what do you do? Um... They are just continuing to beat themselves against this sphere. I'm gonna try to, like, fly in a circle, um, a pretty wide circle, to try and, like, uh, outfly them while I'm, like, looking around. Sure. What's your speed? Uh, my fly speed is 80 feet. Oh! Okay. You... Just as a reminder, I told you it's only for a minute. one minute. This yeah. Spell. Okay, great. Just want to make sure. I just said it. <laughs> yeah. You dart away from this dark cloud of birds that's just come to you immediately, and you start to circle very quickly, and you, you leave them behind fairly easily. They're not as fast as you by any means. They're just simple crows. But this the dark cloud is just following you, hoping to catch up, waiting for a moment when you pause a little too long. Make a perception check for me. As an eagle, I get advantage on perception checks. Nice. Uh, so that would be 19. Oddly, you don't see a nice spire anywhere. But, Leaf being a druid, you know the trees in this area can get very tall. You just see the village, and in the distance, you see peeking out from the trees that huge sandstone temple square with all of the intricate detail and the thousand steps going down. Um, and I don't see any, like, dead trees or... You don't. Okay. Um, then with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive down... <laughs> Okay. into the treetops towards where I left my friends. All right. A moment passes, and then all of a sudden, crashing through the growth above you, you see this orb appear again, and an eagle at the center flies down, lands in front of you. And a, a couple of seconds pass, and then the bubble, it looks like it just pops, and it falls. And leave. Thankfully, you're not followed. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, as a giant eagle, leaf's just like... <laughs> yeah, you look up and you see, you all see this very anxious-looking eagle with wide-blown pupils looking up. Nothing has followed you. Great. The wing's gonna do this, and mm -hmm. now I'm just a little leaf again. How Where was it? Is he all in one piece? Nice. Yeah. 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 Um, I did get swarmed. It was unpleasant um uh but i was able to get a look around i didn't see anything frozen though um i did see the temple that we fought all those undead in and there's a town straight ahead so i think if we want to go talk to people we could talk to people um yeah uh, but there were like 15 of those creepy ravens up there well i say we stay alert we head towards the town perhaps someone will have more information on where we can find the spire but um keep on your toes clearly there's some undead here to greet us and with that valara takes the struggling crow and mutters out you keep saying i guess you're not going to come in handy after all and i unhood it and let it go <laughs> You unhood it and chuck it into the air, and it darts around, confused. It hits a tree, and then scrambles up 
bursting through the treetops and disappears. That was your lucky day. There's like a weird grease stain that it left behind under your arm and there's like a Ugh. feather stuck to it. Yeah. I I try to wipe with my saddlebag edge and scrape off the yeah. muck. That's real gross. Yeah. <laughs> Will not be saving an undead crow again. <laughs> All right, lead the way. So uh, we follow Leaf, who leads us toward. Sure, yeah. And Leaf, because you rolled so well in your perception, you very handily know exactly which direction to go. Oh, and great. thankfully enough, it's where the path leads. You follow this dirt path through this heavy, heavy nature. And eventually you start to hear birds calling in the distance. Beautiful trills. They're very far away, though. And you start to hear the sounds of people. And eventually you get to the edge of this jungle and the path opens out and ahead of you, you see the village that you've been in before. You remember the last time you were here, it was so lively because they were in the middle of a festival. And you remember the smells of all of the food, all of the mangoes that they used and those lotus that they were spicing and frying up. However, the tone is much different today. There are many people in the center of town, but it looks like there's a struggle happening in the center of this crowd. As you get closer and closer, you start to hear whispers. There are tons of people here. It looks like the entire town showed up. And you hear from a tiefling nearby who's whispering to his friend, I can't believe he would have done this. It doesn't sound like him. And the friend responds and says, I don't know. I, he, he disappeared after she died. I mean, it might have affected him in ways we don't understand. And the tiefling holds up a hand and says, I refuse to believe it. It's not like him. Um, hello. Daisy's going to approach them. Sure. Uh, hello. Um, I couldn't help but over here. We we just got into town. Uh, what what is going on? The tiefling and his human companion turn around and look at you. Uh, you notice they're both dressed in very fine leathers, and they have these geometric designed tattoos all down their shoulders. The woman is wearing a red tie around her waist, and the man's wearing a purple tie. Um, and the, the tiefling man says. Uh, sorry, you don't look familiar. Oh, well, that's because we just came to town. But, uh, oh. we are here to help. Um, oh. just wondering if you can fill us in on... Are you, are you the people that were sent for, then? For who? Oh, no, it wouldn't have been you. This is, uh, it's, it's a local matter. Um... And the man looks very hesitant, but the woman crosses her arms over her chest and she says, Things have been happening here. Um, this is probably not a very safe place for you to be right now if you're just, you know, here on vacation, if you're tourists. Oh, no, no, no. We are, we're quite uh, uh, well known. Well, maybe not well known, but we're, we're well accomplished uh, adventurers. So. We've been shattering ice spears uh, in several locations. Ice ice spears, uh, ice spears, and uh, uh, spears. turning the undead and um, ice spires. Uh, spires, that's what they call. It. I get words confused because the spear, and I pull it out and like show it. I'm like, it's like <laughs> you know, it just looks like a spear, but the, it's been shattering massive spires. And undead. anyway, there's a lot going on. Um, and yes. The two glance at each other. We are friends of the departed. Uh, what? I turned to leave. What was her name? Lawen. Lawen. When you say Lawen, a bunch of the people in the crowd that are nearby turn and look at you, and you hear whispers again as people talk. And ahead, through this crowd, you see at the center, where all the commotion is, two people 
and it looks like some kind of official. There are guards holding two people tied to the ground. And the official is saying something to the crowd and also talking to his captives. He's saying, we know it was one of you. You were the only two that were there. It has to be one of you. And you hear this cry of, no, no, it's not me. Can you make a perception check, everybody? <clears throat> Natural one. Oof. 13. 23. 13. Four. All right. My two 13s, um, you sort of dart around trying to peer into the center of this crowd and you see a woman. She looks like she's maybe half elf tied up uh, on her knees, kneeling back. She's dressed in simple robes that are blues and purples, um, very tan, long black hair, leaf. You see who the other person is, and he is immediately very familiar. He is broad-shouldered, very muscular. He has on the one arm that he does have a black geometric sleeve tattoo that goes all the way down, and his black hair is parted in a flop sweat. Mose is sitting there tied up, saying nothing. His face is completely stoic. And you don't see his rabbit anywhere. And you also notice that metallic arm that he had with the intricate, beautiful designs is gone. It looks like there's just a plate here where the arm was. It's Mose. <clears throat> Leaf's gonna, Leaf's gonna just take off running towards the guards. Okay. And, like, run up to one of them and be like, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> you just go straight through the crowd, and because you're so small, people try and grab you and stop you, but they can't quite catch you in time. And you burst into the center of this ring of, well, it's an entire town of people. And you run up to one of the guards, who's a very, very broad, large man. And he's dressed in leathers, he's got a hood on, and it's it's like a black leather, and it's got studs all around it, and he's holding some kind of large weapon. And you go up to him and you... What do you do? Um, excuse me. What happened here? Go away, child. Get back in the crowd. I'm it's not safe man. here. Young man, then go back to the crowd. It's not safe for you here. I know that man. I've you helped know. that man. Where's his rabbit? At that, Mose looks up at you, and you don't see recognition in his face. He looks confused. And like a thousand thoughts are going through his mind. But he doesn't say anything. He might not know me. me uh, it's very complicated. I'm... Um... What happened? The guards sort of, like, takes you off to the side while keeping an eye on Mose, who's just sitting there. And he says, It's not your concern. You should go back. Well, I'm here with a group. We're here to help. In any this way is not can. your problem. I don't recognize you. I don't think you're from here. Uh, no, I'm definitely not. Then take my advice. Go on your way. Do you know where an eye spire is? I said, go on your way. And he heads back to where Moses is, and he puts a hand on Moses' shoulder. Leaf's just going to take a deep breath and sort of angrily walk back to the group. So, no one will tell me anything about Moe's. Um, and they won't tell me about what's going on. And 
Hmm. So the rest of you, you didn't see Moe's, but for Valara, Rufus, and Daisy, you recognize the name. The last time you were here, you had to help two people complete a spell in the middle of a giant square temple. It was down the thousand steps. And the two people were Lawan, who eventually joined your party, and Moe's, who was a very handsome, kind man with a metallic arm and a rabbit familiar. So you know who Mose is. Should I tell him that we know Lawin? Yes, I'm wondering if maybe perhaps we've gone into a different time period, if maybe we are not in a chronological time and place. Well, what I think happened is that we know Lawin in the afterlife. And we never actually met them in real life. You do remember, Leaf, that what you were in was essentially a dream. You entered Lawen going through her death over and over and over. She was a soul trapped in the afterlife, just reliving her final moments. So you never actually came here in person. You never actually met Moe's in person. You met Lawen's memories of Moe's. Mm. Also, can I just say the best thing is when you, as a viewer, as you watch the DM make a face. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching as myself, and I see Allison. Alice said something about like I don't remember, and then Rachel went, <laughs> "Oh, that's wrong. I guess that's wrong." <laughs> You're free to believe whatever you want, and as a DM. I will allow you to No, you that. keep a good game face. At that time, I caught you. <laughs> it was the time travel. You have not traveled through time. Okay. I will tell you that. Great. It was yeah, great. There's, no. nothing, there's nothing here to indicate you've traveled through time. Mo's looks call it out, maybe it like a couple years older than you saw him, but it's not like a drastic change in time. Okay. It's so good when you always keep it to, like, we never <laughs> That's know. That's right. I'm sorry. That one time you went. I was not expecting time <laughs> travel at all, but. Why not? I mean, if you say it, maybe I'm going to say yes one of these days. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Anyways, so Leaf comes back and announces to you all essentially that Moses is in trouble. And the memories that you do have of this man, he was very kind. He was a very good man. Daisy mm -hmm. is going to approach her friends, the, the tiefling, mm -hmm. and again and say, um, I know you said that this is a town matter, but, uh, but we're here, you know, to help this town. Um, tell us, what is Moe's being accused of? They look to each other again. Roll a persuasion for me. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Seventeen. Okay. The tiefling looks reluctant, but the human woman, she kind of looks like she's she's at the end of her rope. And she gets a little bit closer to you to, to sort of talk to you sideways, to look like she's not confiding in you. But she says, you probably haven't been out that far, but... There's this river that cuts through LA Isle and it's been polluted by a magic that we don't understand. No one in the town, uh, so many people have gone and looked at it and no one knows what's going on, but it's been polluted and the birds keep dying and all of the animals that drink from it die. It's our main source of drinking water and now we, we can't take from it. And what does this have to do with Moe's? Moe's and this woman were found at the edge of the river and they were fighting. And they were there when it started. I don't know too much. I wasn't there, but it's thought that it was them. Now, is, is there an ice spire in your knowledge anywhere? in town nearby, have you heard rumors of an ice fire? She looks around at the very tropical surroundings and then looks at you, says, no. Oh, okay. 
Fair enough. Cool. Uh, well, uh, which direction is this river? You just have to head east. A little northeast, but it's very hard to miss. Thank you. What's your name? I, I, I appreciate your help. Anna. Anna. Thank you, Anna. And I'm going to go back and relay this information to my party. All right. As you relay the information, the crowd behind you begins to move together and then disperse. And you notice that the center has been cleared. The official, whoever he was, is gone. And so are Moe's and the half-elf woman. They've been taken somewhere else. And you hear, as the crowd disperses, people talking about an execution. <gasps> There's going to be some kind of an investigation, but if a conclusion isn't reached, there will be an execution. Can we overhear when, how soon this execution is? It's just after the investigation. Um. All right, well, I think, because I, from my experience with Moe's, there's, there's no way he's, responsible for this, but I guess it's possible. I don't know him very well. I say we go to the river and investigate ourselves. Um, but we should be careful because I don't want an innocent person to be uh, executed. Perhaps if we can find the uh, true source of the river's pollution, we can save Moe's. I have a guess. What's your guess? Ice spire? Uh, yeah, ice spire is my guess. Do you think the ice spire is melted into the river? I don't know. Or perhaps if we follow the river, we'll find the ice spire? I just assume anything bad has to do with the ice spire. I haven't really thought much past it. Bad so magic, the- ice spire. Undead ice spire. You know, it just makes sense. I'm also curious if maybe the spire is underground. (laughs) Checks Rachel's face for a reaction. (laughs) Maybe it is, who knows? (laughs) Either way, we need to move quickly to make sure we uh, were able to keep keep Moe's from getting executed unfairly. All right. (laughs) <laughs> as you begin to form your plan for what you're going to do next, we're going to take a break. Oh. Stay we'll tuned to find out what happens. Back ASAP. See you guys soon. See you in two minutes.
Welcome back from break. When we last left off, you were formulating a plan to try and help your friend Mose. He may not remember you, but you remember him. And especially Daisy, you and Mose bonded because you both have familiars. You have little animal companions and he had this little rabbit that he took with him everywhere. Yes, the rabbit. Yeah. What was the rabbit's name? I don't think he gave you one. Oh. Mm. He did. Did he? What was it? Green. Green? Green, like the color. Green, green. the rabbit. Oh, yes, that's right. Because, like, leaf is green. Mm -hmm. Green rabbit. <laughs> it was a little green point of frog. bonding. Green like the frog, yep. Yeah. You all bonded over your animal companions. I love it. All right, let's move to the river. Let's right. see what we can find. And perhaps, hopefully, we can help out Mose and find the spire. All right. You start to head across town and you see some people going about their business again because it, it's still just midday. Not too much time has passed since you've been here. And you see people at their stalls. They're selling different foods and pieces of clothing. Uh, there's some like magical ingredient stalls as well that have some more exotic things that certain spells require. And passing through town, you can tell people are worried. But no one says anything. It's just a, a general haze around everyone's eyes. On the far side of town, there's an opening between buildings and it follows into a separate path that goes deeper into the forest, more in the direction you think you need to go, sort of northeast. However, you see guards posted at the edge of this path, just standing there on either side of the opening. This is the opening to leave toward the river, to mm -hmm. leave the town area? Yes. Oh, OK. I'm going um, to walk up to them. Hello, gentlemen. How are you this fine day? Fine, I guess. Um, is Are we allowed to pass freely? Uh, no. There's an investigation happening and it is not safe. You'll have to stay in town. Oh, uh, we are me, outsiders, so, but we are investigators as well. Uh, yeah, so we keep being told this is a town issue. And so we figured we would take a pause and leave town just for a minute because we do not feel very welcome here at, at the sure, moment. Then, then you can go the safer way, which is probably the way you came. Uh, there's an airship drop site up that way. If you just, if you just go up there, it'll take you to one of the larger cities. We're taking a boat, happens to be on the river. No boats should be coming down the river oh. because it's polluted. We keep hearing about that. Um, we needed to see it ourselves. And, you know, uh, forgive me, but there was, um, there's some very strange bird activities going on the way we came from. Uh, we would just like to be on our way. Sure, and then I head back very... the way you came. No, no, the way forward. I try to smell very this persuasively. This is not, um, okay, <laughs> sure. Roll of persuasion. So that'll be a dirty 20. All right, let's see what he rolls. He looks to his companion across the way who has a very stern face. And the guy that you're talking to is, is rather young. He's around your ages. And he looks conflicted. He says, if it's dangerous the other way, I'm sorry. I would like to let you pass, but I really can't. Can it's, we um, speak to your superior? It seems like you he's are- He's um... down by the river. But again, I, I was told, I was given explicit instructions not to let anyone pass. It's far too dangerous and there's an investigation going on and we can't risk, no offense, but we can't risk people messing up the scene. I'm going to try and look around and see if there's any other ways to get, you know, if there's any places that they could try and sneak around. Sure, make a perception check. Okay, that is a 13, but I'm going to do my um, flash of genius. Flash of genius. Sure. Make it an 18. All right, with an 18, you're looking around for 
another way in this direction. And you can always just chance it and go through the jungle and hope that you know which direction you're going and hope that you don't run into anything that's a little unsavory. But this is really the only path. It's a large one too. This is the kind of path that like carriages and foot traffic would be on almost daily. But what you notice with your 18 is some guards coming out of a house down the street. And it looks like they have a few things in their hands. They close the door and on the opposite side of the tree, the street, guards come out of a different house and they close the door behind them and they have things in their hand. What, what sort of things in their hand? You can't see from here. All right. Leaf's gonna walk up to the guard. Uh, which one? Uh, the one that Valara is talking to. Sure. Say. Hello, sir. Um, I would just like to extend my services as a sort of nature expert. I grew up in nature. I know a lot about nature. I could probably help with the river pollution situation. Look, I know you guys mean well, but we have our own druids and i'm i, I really i don't mean to be rude but, but this do those is... druids know lawen who is now a god what lawen you know lawen yeah we all know lawen yeah i um, know lawen this is a uh, interesting you seem like a nice person um you sure you don't want to be our friend and i'm gonna cast fast friends on him <laughs> because clearly it needs to, this needs to happen <laughs> okay what does fast friends do uh so it's a wisdom saving throw okay um essentially like i i can have a, a creature um it's charmed and it performs a, like a service or an activity that i ask as long as i ask in a friendly manner and it, it doesn't matter what that activity is no it doesn't it's a, i don't think it can harm it the creature um, okay. It says it can't harm the creature or conflict with the creature's normal activities or desires. So it's like we become really good friends. Okay. He rolled an eight. Oh, sweet. It worked. Okay. Uh, okay. So I say, oh, you seem like a nice friend. Um, but it's, we've known each other, uh, you know, for so long, it feels like, even though yeah. we just met. Yeah, you're all really nice. Yes. Um... You know, we um, have heard is, is that in town, um, they need a little bit of help, right, everybody? They, um, what, what was that again? What, what did they need in town? What was it? We are, we are looking for um, evidence of what's polluted the river, uh, trying yes. to clear Moses' name. And somebody um, in town uh, drinks the polluted water. And you need to just make oh, sure no. they're okay. Yeah, so. Oh, Sh should I go now? I think you might want to go just check. And then, you know, when you're all done, you come back to your post, obviously. But we were sent through this way to do our job. So we have to yeah. make sure, yes. Okay, sure. Yeah, go ahead. But as he says this, the guard on the opposite side of the path steps forward. And he's a rather large man with a very stern face. And he says, what's going on? And the uh, young man turns around and he says, uh, they're my friends, they can go ahead. And the guard says, absolutely not. We have explicit instructions not to let anyone go through here. It is a an investigation scene. Please turn around. Rufus is going to tug on Jacques, uh, his, you know, whatever, you know, is his, at his height. And go, and go, come in, all right. right. Listen, I wonder if we could just find out if we need to go in these houses because we could go invisible, one of us, and go check these houses, because they keep coming out with things in their hands. So I'm wondering if we don't have to go down to the river, but we just go in. I mean, but maybe not, but maybe just ask your friend privately, away from that guard, yes. if there's any information about the investigation in those houses. Okay, so uh, we'll say we will not cross. We were just trying to help because we are friends with some people who've been affected. Okay. Um, so, yes, so I, I, I turn back to the main guy and I say, mm -hmm. oh, we meant, no, we did not realize we cannot cross anymore. We understand. Uh, it's just talking, catching up with my friend. He's been working so much, oh, so much. 
the young guy is like sweating and the older guard is like (laughs) and he goes back to his post it's about a you um rufus and so i turn towards rufus and like i everything that you just said i like try to remember and then i say the same thing to like (laughs) him so that way we're all up on the same page including the guy that i had cast a spell on (laughs) all right so you're talking to this young guy and i believe rufus you had said something about do we need to investigate the houses and ask about the houses or like ask about what's what's going on with that sure so the young man uh puts his hand on your shoulder jacques i'm like up (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so <I'll> say. <laughs> um, like like a friend, you know, just patting your shoulder, and he says, "Oh, well, I mean that that's Erit and Moses' homes, so of course they're being looked into. But I mean, they're they're both very good at hiding things, so I don't know if anyone's gonna find anything. They don't even know what to look for. Honestly, we don't. None of us know what we're looking for. This just happened so suddenly, and after Lawen died, Moses just he." He kind of disappeared and no one really knew what happened to him. And then suddenly he was back in town and he had a house and then all of this happened very, very quickly. I don't know. Daisy's going to turn to um, to Jacques and say, how long does this last? Oh, f- one hour. That's it. Um, so we have some time, but we, you know, he, he, he I, I, the good thing is, is that it is a very light spell, but he will know he is charmed by me at the end of it. Yes, and um, well then, I might as well. And Daisy takes her goggles and puts them on and turns to the other guard and casts Charm Person. <laughs> hey, that's another wisdom saving throw, I believe. Uh, yes, wisdom save. With a nine. All right. Oh, thank God. All right. <laughs> go uh, bed. <laughs> so, uh, you are looking fabulous today. Uh, thank you so much for letting us all pass. All right. The larger guard smiles and says, yes, of course. Go on ahead. Thank you. Time is of the essence. Let's go. This sweet. All right. <laughs> Hop on over. <laughs> you head down the path. A couple of minutes pass. You notice it starts to get a little colder. And in the path ahead of you, you see some shapes, some lumps. And as you get closer, you notice they are the bodies of crows and other birds. And the closer you get, you assume, the more bodies you see of boar and deer and rabbits and squirrels, things that look like they were fleeing in the path. You have to step around all of these bodies of animals. Until ahead of you, you hear the distinct sound of rushing water. And you also hear voices. Should we sneak in? I was going to suggest that, but I also, um, I, if you don't mind, if we, if we step off and I can do a little ritual um to get a little bit of information about the land around us how long does it take a minute oh is that not bad no. um yeah, yes, it's fine let's all step to the side before we step to the side be. um and since we since we can hear the river i assume it's within three miles of me yes it is within three miles of me. um so leaf is gonna sort of uh, he's gonna sit on the ground um dig his his feet in a little bit um put his hands by his sides and close his eyes and he's going to cast commune with nature okay um so that's a fifth level spell um and you briefly become one with nature and gain knowledge of the surrounding ter- territory. In the outdoors, the spell gives you knowledge of the land within three miles of you. Um, the spell doesn't function where nature has been replaced by construction. So I guess, like, if I'm in a dungeon, it won't mm-hmm. work. Um, 
but I instantly gain the knowledge of up to three facts of your choice about any of the following subjects as they relate to the area. Um, and I would like to know about um, uh, oh, I thought, oh, I guess I can't figure anything out about caves. But I can figure out if there is influence from other planes of existence. Okay, let's go through these one at a time. Yes. So you dig your feet in and you close your eyes. And for you, outside sound kind of disappears. And you hear this deep hum and you feel this vibration in your feet. And you think you hear the earth. You suddenly hear the wind going through the treetops far away. You hear rushing water and in the distance, a gentle brook as it splits off. And you get this feeling in your lungs. They're heavy and stiff. And you can feel while you're connected to nature, a bit of the pollution. It's thick like tar and it weighs so heavy and it leaves this acidic taste in the back of your throat. What was your first question? Um, well, it says I gain uh, knowledge of up to three facts mm -hmm. and then there's a list of uh, options. Yeah, what was um, the first one? The first one, um, I'd like to find out if there's influence from other planes of existence. Yes. Um, um, I'd like to, uh, this might be too, this might be overwhelming, but, um, uh, powerful celestials, fey, fiends, elementals, or undead, and then, um, terrain so for and that one, of water are the three that I would like facts about. Okay, we're gonna go through them one at a time, so that first one, yes. I don't even remember what it was anymore. I remember the answer was yes. Like, this is why I wanted to go existence. through them one at a time. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So planes of existence. Yes, you do get the sense that something else, it feels parallel, is affecting it. And it also feels familiar. You know what this is. It's it's the other plane of afterlife. It, it, it is being affected by that. And you know, you, mm -hmm. you get the sense. You you kind of know what it is. I just wanted to um, sure was... Yeah. So the second one. You reach out, you get a ping of something, you get a, a lot of undead. It's not overpowering, it's just you suddenly hear bird song everywhere. And you hear staggering four-legged feet. Um, you hear a lot of animals suddenly when you think of the undead. When you think of Fae, you don't hear anything. When you think of Celestial, there's one ping far off and moving, something large, and it's very slow. And what was your third? Um, just information about the terrain and bodies of water. Okay. Just general information? Uh, yeah, it just says I gain knowledge. Okay. You get a basic map of the area within a three mile radius. You can see every hill, every stone, every tree. It's like a 3D map printed in your head, and you can see the river. It is wide and swift, but it's clogged. It's deeply, deeply poisoned by something, and it's not within this three-mile radius. Mm. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so I'll, sort of, I'll come out of it. Um, so... Um... <laughs> The, the, the source of the river's pollution, or wherever the river is getting clogged up, um, isn't, isn't in 
three miles of here. Um, but I believe that the ice spire is. And there's lots of undead. Lots of undead around. And... Mm, I think you believe the ice spire is within three miles? I do believe at least um, the influence of it is, if 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 not the the spy itself, because of undead. Um, no, I it's um I could just sense it, you know. And um, do you think it's underground or? Um, did I get a sense of a location? No. So, like I said, the source mm -hmm. is not here. It's not okay. within the three miles. Okay. But the influence yeah. of it is. Yeah, you feel okay. it. Um, I guess, um, no, uh, the spire isn't here, but a lot of the things that is here is from the spire. And I did feel a big scary celestial somewhere. Um, so that's something we have to look out for. Oh, maybe it's friendly. I don't know. Um, it just is. Should we perhaps get closer to the people that we can hear at the river and try to eavesdrop on what they're saying? Yeah, let me um, let me let, let me do a little um, little uh, pass without trace situation. Keep us a little. I don't want the guards to lose their jobs who let us in here. You know, um. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to really get caught. Let's try not to get too close. Yeah. But let's um we'll we'll sneak sneak in and see without revealing ourselves. Would time. anyone else like to be invisible? Yeah. If anyone I'm cares gonna... to hop on my back. Yeah, I'm gonna hop on your back. You okay. Can, you know, I can make myself invisible, but if you're doing it and I'm taking a ride, let's go. <laughs> take take a free invisibility. I am unfortunately is a very clunky, just as a reminder. I'll I'll help. I'll help. Um I'll help. I'll just like Okay, so me and Rufus are now invisible. Uh, we will cast Pass Without Trace, even there, though they're invisible. It <laughs> will help the rest of us. Yeah, it definitely will. Double sneaky. All right, so how close are you trying to get? With an ear shot. Okay, with, so we can you're going to have to get pretty close because... The, the closer you get to them, the more you hear this roaring river. And I mean, it's a it's a river. It's a thick boy. <laughs> just plunging through the undergrowth. You're and it, wondering sometimes, get me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a roaring river. Uh, you, hear, you hear voices over it. And going through the underbrush, are you trying to stay on the path or going alongside it? What's the plan here? What you doing? Whatever seems most stealthy. Like if if the path seems like it'll be quieter, and there are places to hide. We'll mm -hmm. probably do that. But if it seems like we can, you know, be more discreet a different way, we'll do that. Yeah, I was thinking we would be sort of like on the edge of the path, okay, walking um, near the brush in case we have to do like a mm -hmm. quick a quick side step. We don't want our people to be walking right. Top, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Towards us, we're gonna get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Leaf, as you're looking around, you think that is a very smart idea because the undergrowth here is very thick. There are a lot of vines that you can get caught in. There's a lot of crunchy things underfoot. There are a lot of roots that jut up out of nowhere, and you can get caught on. So, being on the side of this path is probably the quietest and probably the safest. You can duck to the side if you need to. So you follow the path for a while and you see up ahead, it just sort of dips down and a huge river comes into view. It's very swift. It looks like there was maybe once a bridge here, but it's been destroyed. And you see a ton of guards on either side of this raging water. They're looking around uh, and a couple of them start to head up the river going against the current, but they're on the banks, so they're fine. And the water itself is a deep, muddy brown. And though it's swift, it moves like it's a little bit viscous. 
like it's a little a little thicker than regular water and there's branches and leaves and all sorts of things caught in it and every once in a while you see a little shape zip by in the water not moving but you see you notice the guards have not found what they wanted to here so they begin to follow the river up Can we do some investigating to see if we see any thing? Sure. Roll an investigation check, everybody. I really wish that someone had, like, a, you know, a, a chemical kit where you put, like, the water in and do drops and go like this and stuff. <laughs> I put, like, a chlorine kit for magical... Uh-huh. Check the pH balance of this water. Yeah. Did, yeah, did, in there. did you say 12. investigation? I did. Okay. Oh gosh, thank I God. Got six. Nineteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Everyone above a uh, fifteen and above. Uh you notice there are several smaller paths that are what the guards are currently following. There's not, you know, branching off of this main road is essentially what it is, or these little man-made paths that are just like single file things. You don't see anything in particular here. Not at the edge of the water. Can we hear anything? Sorry, Rufus, what was that? Can we follow the guards, you know, that are going on smaller paths? I feel like that's the answer. And Daisy, what were you saying? I, okay, do we overhear them saying anything? No, they're they're getting ahead of you, unless you're following them down the paths. I would like to follow them. What do you think? I think upriver. I think upriver is a good idea. All right. Yeah. You start to follow the guards upriver. And... You can every once in a while you get close enough, thinking you're you're pretty you're pretty freaking stealthy. To hear snippets of their conversation, uh, the guards ahead of you, what you gather is they're nervous to be here, uh, because a lot of undead have shown up recently, but so far nothing has been seen. There's just they talk about just the bodies that started appearing out of nowhere. And how one day, just like two days ago, birds started to just fall out of the sky and fish would catapult themselves from the river onto the bank and die. Morbid. Very. You go up, up the river a ways. Can everybody roll a stealth check for me? Yeah, don't forget that those in my pass without trace. Natural Plus twenty. 10. Thank you. Ooh. Okay. And Rufus yeah. is on my back. I'm glad I've got that oh, yeah. pass without trace. Well, unless you fall. <laughs> you still have to roll a stealth. Twenty-seven. I rolled a seven. No. Uh. Wait. Oh, it's plus ten. Plus ten. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's dirty twenty. Everyone has plus ten. That's what pass without trace does. Yeah. I forgot. One <laughs> twenty-two. Okay. What was yours, Leaf? Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty and Jock. Uh, dirty twenty. You are very stealthy, thankfully. How long does Pass Without Trace last? One hour, if I think okay. about it. Okay. Okay. And how long does invisibility last? An hour. Okay. You follow them for quite a ways. And it starts to go uphill until you can turn around and look down and you can actually see a little bit of the village. You have started to go up a very high incline. And the guards stop every couple of minutes to get their breath. But you feel like you're on the verge of your one hour. And just as you think it's about to hit the one hour mark, the guards suddenly branch off and they head back towards town. Okay. Lucky Ooh. for you. That was really, I mean, I was about to just do it again, but if we can keep going, <laughs> I was about that's to great. 
Perhaps we should go to the top of this mountain we are climbing, uh, up the river, and find the river source and also see uh, what we can see from the top. I think I believe you said it was outside a three mile radius, so I'm not sure how, what the view will be like, but we've come this far. Do we see anything up ahead? I'm gonna well, make a perception check. Anyone who wants to look ahead. 13. Our mucker. 18. 20, 23, Rochelle. Woohoo. Six. Oh, plus 10. No. 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 Not plus 10. When that's you, for that's stealth. Just yeah. stealth. That's what passed without trace. <laughs> well, I did a Rufus six. Lost it. I did Rufus a 16. No, he's okay. not. He's sober. Um, six. Okay. Everyone who rolled a 15 and above, you see that it, it's heading straight up not literally straight up but you're you're on a pretty intense incline you can definitely walk it but you're going to be winded by the time you get to the top wherever that is shock being tall definitely has its advantages you look ahead and you see what you're heading for above everybody's heads and above everybody's shoulders you see just the faint mist coming from a waterfall it looks like this incline goes up hits a peak and you very faintly hear a roar of a waterfall coming back down. There is no waterfall in that direction with the mist. So this is good to know. Everybody. I wonder if the spire is behind the water. Could be there, it could be the waterfall, mm -hmm. could be anything. Um, but mm -hmm. this is good to know just for our um, our information as we are going for it. Uh, if we can take a short rest somewhere, I can try to talk with nature again. But don't forget, uh, right now there's a few things that are active. If we wait one hour, it could um, affect uh, Daisies and I spells, and as well as they pass without a trace, which I feel uh, it's already to be gone. Honest. It's been yeah. an hour. That's you're gone. you're oh, you've hour. lost your pass without trace, and you are about That's why we to all lose your visibility. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, um, but we also don't want to waste any time, as that's true. As Moses is potentially going to be executed. Well. Where do we want to find this evidence then? We would have to bring the guards here. Well, let's let's go up to the to the waterfall and see if we find anything of importance. Okay. We could bring the evidence to the guards, or I could have Cla uh, Artemis record some evidence if needed. Has anybody seen any sort of tracks? Have we been looking for footprints? Uh, it's quite um, muddy here. Uh, is I... the fourth floor could uh, let us know if people have been walking through? I can look now. Yeah, if anyone wants to look for tracks, you can make a survival check. Not my strong suits, but I should check. <laughs> uh, that is a 21. Nope, just kidding. That is an 18. I looked at the wrong stat. I got a natural 20. Yeah. Oh! oh, two natural 20s. Ooh. It was so painful because it was cocked and then uh -huh. I was like, Aw. and then I rolled it again. I got it. Oh my God. I was like, oh, I love it. Mine was cocked, but then I rolled it again and it was a 19. Wow. Volara? 14. Okay. You guys rolled so well. You're looking around and you see, of course, your own footprints, naturally. You see the footprints of the guards and you see where they branch off and disappear. And you can hear them like tumbling through the underbrush down below you headed back towards town. Very obviously not trying to be stealthy. And in their armor, they probably can't be very stealthy. You see the tracks of animals. Some of them look very natural and normal. Some of them look like they're dragging. But... My two nat 20s, in the undergrowth, you see footprints that you didn't notice before. Two different tracks going up. There are two people who came in this direction. 
Yeah, I see it too. Do they look fresh? Can you tell what they are? They don't look fresh, but you they're they're distinct enough and you both rolled nat 20s, you can follow them. They're human sized. Human size. We, we follow we follow these. I say we go. Should, should I make us invisible again some of us? I think you should save your spells until we hear something in the distance. All right, yeah. I will. But uh, I think that's smart, Rufus, to have it in your pocket. Yeah, let's go. All right. You follow this path up. And it's a treacherous climb. But you manage. And when you reach its peak, your lungs are burning. And you've definitely had one of the hardest workouts you've had in a while. You can feel your legs cramping just a little bit under all of the exercise. But when you reach that peak, what you see is this. It flattens out a little bit before reaching the pinnacle of the waterfall. And on this flattened plateau area, you see a large stone platform. It looks incredibly old, weathered with age. You're about, at this point, two hours out of town and in the center you see this shimmer my 220s i'll let that carry over this shimmer looks like a spell that's been broken it looks like maybe some kind of concealment that's no longer working properly And in the center of this huge, just plateau of stone that's been laid down, you see the ruins of a small, small temple. Looks like the walls are just blasted down. There's no longer a roof of any kind, but there is a small altar of some kind in the center. And around that altar is a glittering image that replays over and over. You'll have to get closer to see what it is. Let's go. All right. You head up. And as you get closer to the temple, you suddenly feel this boom. And the ground shakes a little bit. You can't tell where it's coming from. In the center, where this ruined small, like the size of a regular bedroom temple was, You see stone has shattered and gone flying. And there's just a little, looks like a, almost like a a birdbath fountain in the center. And there's this sparkling image. It's bright green and it it looks almost electric. Can everybody make an arcana check for me? Eleven. Six. <laughs> Twelve. Rufus. What's a nine? But I thought that I had, I could go, I could have advantage on a con on maybe, or is it just history? I think you have like stone knowledge. I'll flash of genius her as well, because this seems like something that Daisy might know about. Don't forget, Daisy, you also have advantage from the... I know, I'm saving that in case we encounter something scary. (laughs) All right, with your flash of genius, what does that come out to? Uh, 17. Okay. With a 17, you've heard of this spell before. It's very rare. Not many people know how to do it anymore. It's a protective barrier that, when broken, leaves a flash of an image of what happened when the barrier was broken. Yeah. And as you get closer, you see the whole thing sort of shimmers in and out of existence, like a veil is being drawn back and forth over it. But what you can see is around this birdbath for lack of a better term, in the center, this basin on a pedestal, you see a 
an electric green glittering image of a figure in robes reaching out to touch the pedestal. And behind, you see just an arm. It's like you're catching a snapshot, but only within a certain radius. You see just an arm very close to you, coming out of nowhere, electric green, reaching for the woman. You feel another boom, and the ground shakes. Um... Daisy's going to have Artemis just record this image so so we have a little clip of it. Sure. I'm looking around to see if I could tell where that thumping or the ground shaking, yeah. what's causing that. Make a perception check. Okay. I'm using a new dice and it sucks. That's a six. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Okay. <laughs> um... This is a very interesting sight. Do you think that figure is real, as we see? Should we fight it? The shimmering. No, I think I, it, it, it's capturing um, something that happened in the past. Uh, it's oh. capturing the moment that the spell was, the seal was broken. So it's not, it's, it's not there, but it, do the, do the footprints match up with the figure that we see? They do. And you look over where that arm is, there are footprints standing right there. Does it look like the woman who was arrested with Moe's? You can't tell. There's just a cloak. Because there's two figures, though. But you and said it was the... female, the one. Yeah, you can tell from the slight figure of it that it is female. You can see just the bottom of a dress. You can't see the face. All right. Uh, what else is there for us to investigate here? Is, can we go closer to the image? There is a is a Artemis. You said she uh, uh, can capture moments. Yes. Yes. Should yeah, we capture on her? Um, the... She's already captured. Yeah. It. Yes. Yeah. She, okay. did. The, she, she good. captured it on more. She captured. She, she captured it on the VHS. The video hippo system. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> it's a great. Yes, the video... hey Kellen, Kellen, for that because that was so clever. Write down that you get advantage on one roll for the rest <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> yeah. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> reward that. I gotta reward that. Oh, I hate it. Oh. All right. Yes, yeah, son. <laughs> I'm myself that. Um. So you have this temple ahead of you that's sort of shimmering in and out of existence. You also have the waterfall, which now you can see. In this big plateau area, it's like along a far wall, and it just sort of peaks up to a cliff. I'm going to go try and examine, as get as close as I can to this waterfall and the river and see what I see. Sure. Same. You guys head over to the waterfall. Those that went over there make an investigation check for me 23 mm -hmm. seven your dice need to go and dice check i know i keep i keep trying new ones and hey they're all low we get it we'll get you we'll, we'll you know we'll get you a new set mm -hmm. listen we'll, some days be we'll like that some crystals yeah. on it yeah. we'll, uh, <laughs> you just sell dice chips. yeah yeah. yeah, it's more symbolic than anything else. But with your, what, 23, you said? Okay, with your 23, you notice these huge circular-esque indentations in the dirt. And it looks like it heads for the waterfall, almost like a path. I'm going to follow the path. I'm going to follow the path, I say to my friends. Okay. Does that sound good? Um, before you go, um, do you think it's safe? If if do do we all feel any danger? Do we need any sort of um, protection, or should I wait? I have no idea. 
Okay, just okay. before we see any trouble, let's do our best to uh, alert one another if we think something's ahead, because I would like to make sure you're all taken care of. Is anyone coming with me? I'll go with yes. you. And I'm, I'm going to give you bardic inspiration. All right, so Rufus and Jacques are staying behind near the temple and Daisy and Valara and Leaf are heading for the waterfall, correct? All right. You head towards the waterfall following these footprints or whatever they are, and it looks like they go behind the waterfall. These are positively massive indentations, this path that they've made. And you can head behind the waterfall if you wish. Yes. I would okay. like to say I'm a little afraid that this might be that giant celestial, but we'll just, you know, just keep think keep that in mind that I felt something big and celestial. Just oh. a reminder, Daisy. All right. You have to head just straight into the waterfall, and as soon as you step in, it plummets down on you. But you go through it fine. It's just water, and you're just completely drenched on the other side. Your hair is plastered straight down. But when you get to the other side of the waterfall, you see a cavern. And it looks like there's an opening up at the top that's letting in light. There's lush life all over this cavern and a beautiful tree in the center. It looks like butterflies are resting on the tree trunk and illuminated in this sunbeam. But they're frozen. And oh. coming out of the side of the tree, you see a giant spire of ice. But, as you notice this, you also notice a giant shape behind the tree. Huge. Dark. And as it steps forward into the sunlight, you see a huge turtle. Absolutely massive. It's covered in growth. There's a couple trees, very small saplings, growing on his back. There's moss coating his skin. And you see coming out of his eyes, this sludge it's blinking slowly. It looks like whatever has affected the land around here has also affected this giant turtle. He's maybe a story and a half tall. He's massive. Hello, turtle. Hello. When you say this, it steps into the light, and it's sluggish, but because it's so large, it moves great distances at a time. And you feel this rumble come out before you hear a voice in your head. It's deep and soothing in a way that almost gives you goosebumps. And it says, hello. You all hear this. Well, the three of you that are in the cavern. Let me just... I want you to meet my friends. And Daisy's going to kind of go back under the water and be like, Shock! <laughs> Move this! We need you! Daisy, why don't you use a sending stone? Because Valara has the other yeah. one. Oh, why did. Oh. Do, do we see her? Can we see her very. Yeah, you definitely. You see just Daisy peek out of this waterfall and just water drenching all over her. And she's saying, Come, come, come. I start running. Okay. Yes, I follow. And then I go to the turtle and I say, now what is your name, friend? You step into this cavern and Rufus and Jacques, you step in behind and you see the same thing. This giant tree, this giant turtle and the ice spire jutting out of the side of the tree. This giant turtle sitting in the sunlight, basking in its warmth. You all feel that rumble, that deep mmm, before it speaks in your mind in this soothing voice. And it says, my name is very old. You are not from here, are you? No, we aren't. It's very nice to meet you, very old. Now tell me, what is this spire here? You feel another rumble, and you think it's chuckling. And slowly, as if in an immense amount of pain, it lays down. And in your head you hear, the ice appeared 
in my domain. Do not call me very old child. You may call me Gorutar, is what my people uh, called me. Apologies, I misunderstood Gorutar. <laughs> Again, you feel this rumble of laughter. Um, we would like to help get rid of this ice fire. It cannot be destroyed. But first, can you tell us how it appeared here? We have a friend that needs, that needs our help. It simply appeared one day. I do not normally stay here, but my presence keeps the pollution from spreading. Do you need some healing? Are you unwell? Very. Hmm. Is there um, a way we can help you? I do not know. The poison is deep. Um, I, I may be able to do something, but it would take all day. Hmm. Um, I, could, I could cast, I could, I would like to try to help you a little bit and alleviate at least some of your discomfort. Um, I cast Healing Word at the second level, which isn't going to give that much healing, but I want the turtle to know we mean very well. <laughs> um, so 2d4 plus 4. And then um, uh, I think I seen this. Uh, I don't know. I, I just feel bad for the turtle, so I'm going to do it. Um, Jack kind of very nervously. He's not used to seeing things bigger than him. Oh, it's, it's very big. A few times. Mm -hmm. It's happened already with a giant. Mm -hmm. like, so he kind of like goes for it. He doesn't like this. He's nervous. And he takes a step forward. He goes, um, I have to touch you in order to try to do this. And it's quite powerful. But if you trust me, I would like to try. It nods its giant head and then lays its chin on the ground. And when you send some healing towards it, Valara, it sort of smiles and you hear a very deep thank you in your mind. I try to um, mind reply back and say, you're welcome. <laughs> It was 11 points. Yeah. <laughs> um, I dump a uh, greater restoration okay. into it. As you, you touch its shell, you can immediately feel there is something incredibly wrong, especially with your connection to your goddess. This creature is the oldest thing you've ever, ever experienced. It almost extends beyond time, whatever this being is. And you can tell it's not quite just a giant turtle. There's something extra about it. You have to connect to it when you're healing it. And you cast Greater Restoration, you feel a fight going on. You're healing, fighting something in this turtle. It becomes a battle and you don't feel anything right away. You feel like it's going to take some time and effort to be able to heal him. It's, it's like, oh, I just like kind of sigh um, and step back and I look to everyone and I'm like, this, this is not good. Um, I think that maybe by taking care of the spire, it will unpoison things and maybe lift a sort of whatever spell or something that's on, killing these people. And I think it will stop. Hello, the, hello, sir. <laughs> I think it will stop the infection, but I don't think it will heal the wound. If that makes sense. Um, I would like to destroy it, but first I want to see if there's anything where we can, you know, clear Moses' name. Okay. So I'm going to do some uh, investigating around the spire. Sure. You head over to the spire and roll an investigation check, Daisy. Haha, <laughs> 28. Nice. With your 28, 
you head to this gigantic spire just jutting out from the side of the tree and you see all of these electric blue butterflies some resting on the tree frozen solid the tree itself looks like it's frozen where the spire is coming out of it and while you're over there you hear the trickling of water and you look down and through the branches or not branches i always say that through the roots of this tree you can see down and you see water running underneath it the spire itself looks a little different it's got some more of that electric green energy that flits around inside of the spire just darting back and forth. Daisy's going to um, have Artemis record another little clip mm -hmm. of uh, just what, what, of the spire, of the tree, of the butterflies. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps one of these butterflies could tell us what happened here. if someone speaks to butterflies. <laughs> I can speak to the animals, but uh, they cannot speak back. They understand me, uh, is that it? Perhaps we could coax a butterfly to come back with us voluntarily, and we could find someone in town who could speak to the butterfly, and the butterfly could explain what happened. That sounds like a, a good plan, better than I have in my brain. <laughs> If I turn into a butterfly, I could talk to the butterfly, right? If yes. she turns into a butterfly? I, I believe if you wild shape, you can speak to animals. Oh. Hmm. Or well, rather, that... you can speak to the animal that you turn into. Like, was... if you turn into a hawk, you can talk to a hawk. I was going to save my wild shape to get us downhill faster. Um, but if, if talking to a butterfly would be better, I can do that. What if you turn into the thing you thought would help it? Well, no, never mind. No, nah, God, if I'm going to talk to a butterfly, I need to be a butterfly. Hmm. Well, Rufus, can't you fly? Yeah, I can. Um, well, may perhaps Rufus, you turn into a butterfly and, uh, and uh, not a uh, leaf, and then perhaps Rufus can rush the evidence down. Oh yeah. Do, do, do I? Can I? How would Artemis go with me? Well, the evidence, the butterfly. Mm, yes, but Artemis, yes. How much does Artemis weigh? I'm sorry? How much does Artemis weigh? Artemis is quite heavy. She's oh, all metal okay. and large. Over 240 pounds? Yes. Mm. All right. Um, I say we destroy this spire. I can make Artemis fly. But Art... Oh, and then perhaps I could ride her down. Because it's a uh, touch. My target gains flying speed at 60 feet. Oh, 60 feet. Oh, 60 feet. When spans. How long does the spell last? Lasts up to 10 minutes. I don't know if we'll be able to get down there in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, why Why don't. Oh. Miles and 10 well, minutes? Yeah. Wouldn't you? We're wasting precious time. I say we destroy this spire and get get a butterfly down there and Artemis down there as quickly as possible. So do you think there's anything in there that we need to put souls away? It looks like energy to me. It looks like... Does it look like there are faces in, in the spire this time? Yep. Oh. yep. It looks like the last two that you've seen. Okay. So Shock. let's... Would you like to put these souls to rest before we stab it with our big hefty spear. <laughs> Do you like to perform the ceremony in? Yes, I think that is um, the, best the best option, except um, 
is there, you say it's kind of like jutting out and I don't have, am I tall enough to reach it or should I stand on Turtle's back or? You can, yeah, you can get around. So like, here's the tree. It's at an angle coming out of the tree. You can get all the way around it, but you will have to be on your tippy toes to, to get your herbs around the base of it. Uh, very well. Uh, if anybody has any sort of way for me to stick other herbs around, like some sap or some muck, uh, is that is what I will be using to adhere it to the circle. That is going to spin it up. Excuse me, Fronza, would you mind if I buy, borrowed some of your eye sludge? There's Fronza? mud on the ground. <sighs> he, he, can, can I ask him for a, because it's sticky, right? His Frog, sir? Zodar. Zodar. <laughs> you mean the giant turtle? Turtle, sir. Goruta. <laughs> uh, Goruta. Uh, can you make a nature check real fast? I thought I would. Yeah, why not? Uh, 14. Uh, yeah, the why not? The sludge coming out of his eyes is like caustic. It's the pollution. It's not, awesome. it's not like mud. It's like straight up gunk and yeah. nastiness. Yeah. I thought it was na nasty, but like just, you know, not pollute, not like. Mud, mud might be acid. safer and less um, invasive. We have mud. Is it all around? Yes, yeah. it's just the mud. Okay. So through whatever means, we can just cut through this. You manage to do your ritual. You set up all the things you need to. You dump that pine branch into the liquid from your temple and you smear it. You go through your ritual process and you feel these souls, heavy, thick, many, pressing right on the corners of your mind and you feel them release. And you all see the souls that are inside of this spire disappear. But you still, f you still see that crackling green energy Hmm. Shall we spirit? Spear the spire, I say. Stick it with your stick, Jacques. It was better it, before. It, it was better before. You say yeah. it was safe. Is this a uh -huh. delivery? Is the end. <laughs> Jacques and I am just like looking back, being like, yeah, all right. It was better before. But we will we'll, we'll bring it back. You feel another rumble in the ground like you were feeling before you were inside of the waterfall cave. And you can now tell exactly what's causing it. Every time the turtle takes a deep breath, it wheezes and the entire ground rumbles with him. Oh. So you take that spear. Jacques. As you thrust the spear deep into the ice, cracking its surface, make a perception check for me. And uh, uh, Daisy's recording this on Artemis. Okay. That's a 17. The 17. You jam that spear into the ice and you feel it vibrate like a tuning fork again as the whole thing just spider webs with cracks. And just a split second before it cracks, you see this green energy inside flash in front of your face, just on the, on the inside of the ice. But you see it is again one of those snapshots. And you see a reflection of a half-elf woman's face just before it completely shatters into shards of icy glass that fall to the floor and slowly begin to melt. Is Artemis able to capture that half-elf woman's face? You'll have to look back and see, but you think so. All right. Um, the times of the essence, I saw a, a, a face of the woman, the half-elf woman. She She's responsible in some ways, and we have a connection to somebody on this uh, on this earth who maybe can, um, you know, provide us with information on it or something, something. Um, so she's the one that was in the town square with with Mose, and they were in the middle, and they were both arrested. Mm -hmm. <gasps> it's not Mose; it's her. <laughs> All right. Um, well, let's let's get a butterfly and let's let's get down there and try and save Mose. All right. You have to wait yeah. a hot minute for them to thaw, but they do eventually. You see their wings very slowly moving until they've completely thawed. Yeah. Uh, before we go. I just want to speak to uh, Gorutar really quick. Um, and so I turn to him and I go, I'm sorry, but time is of the essence. Uh, we must leave, but I wish to return. 
um, I know your pain is going to be ongoing. And um, I have a thing in my back pocket that can consecrate the whole area. And I would like to make a regenerative spot for you and protect these systems how long, of yours. How long does that take? It takes a full day of casting and... Um, Should we it, leave here to do it and we'll rush? No, it's, it, I also, unfortunately, trying to heal the turtle also do not have that spell available. Um, oh, yeah. So I think I need to return at a later date, but I, I want to promise this to you. You feel another deep rumble and you hear that deep sound that occurs before he speaks in your mind. And he says, do not worry about me for now. Go, clear your friend's name. You have done enough. Merci. And I just kind of give him a small nod and go to you guys now. Sounds great. Um, Jacques, can you tell the butterfly we need their help? Oh. Oh, they're, they're everywhere. Just flying around. Oh, they are. Yeah. It's oh. almost ethereal watching them flit around and catch the sunlight. They are electric blue and beautiful. There's tons of them. It's a fantastic uh, little, little papillon. Eh. Uh, I kind of call over to one of them. Are you casting the speak with um, animals? I do not have that. It's intrinsically inferable. It's so that's um, right. Yeah, but they can't like communicate, communicate. They, uh -huh. no, they kind of have to like, there's like, you know, it's like charades. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I turn towards the papillon and I say, hey, um, is there a way that you could allow me and my friends to uh, ride your delicate wings for a little bit? We promise we will not uh, cause you harm. As you say this, uh, all of the butterflies are dancing in that huge beam of sunlight just spiraling up and down in this warm sun as they stretch their wings. And from this column of electric blue, a small cloud of butterflies comes over to you and they alight all over your head and shoulders and some of them cling to your front. All right, well, it seems that Jacques has some friends to come with us. Uh, let's go. All right. For the sake of brevity, it takes you about two and a half hours. Actually, a little bit less because you're going downhill. It takes you like two hours. And you slip and slide back down the hill away from this temple that you found earlier. And you head back to town. And all of your butterflies stay put. They they just enjoy the ride. Yeah, I'm uh, talking to them. Like, they're on my nose. They're uh -huh. everywhere. I'm so happy. And I'm like, so, they are, you want me to perform a ceremony on this one? <laughs> you butterflies wish to get married? You're getting okay. lots of little butterfly kisses. There's lots of butterflies that land on your cheek and they just Aww. like... Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, and I'll burn through my day's spells of ceremony to marry a bunch of these butterflies. <laughs> bunch of butterflies together. Yeah. Perfect. This entire polypod of butterflies <laughs> are all now married to each other and they flit around you happily. You manage to get back into town and you pass the two guards at the gate who look completely shook to see you, for lack of a better term. They're they're startled. They're like, what? how did you get past us? They know Where are you going? they were charmed. They the do. And you can tell in their face. It's all it's all okay. We we're fine. Everything's fine. We just we found the source of where where is this uh trial situation going on this potential execution uh we're here to help we're on your side uh the older guard has a very stern angry expression on his face you get the sense he's not going to be talking to you anytime soon but the young man who is sweating profusely mm -hmm. seeing all of you uh just points in a direction and he looks down like he doesn't want to even make eye contact with you guys but he's pointing at a long building up ahead that has a thatch roof Thank you. Actually, I have something for you because of, uh, because you've been so kind. And Daisy just pulls like a little mechanical, uh, a little mechanical like watch mm -hmm. on a chain, and just is like, I made this the other day. I He's go oh, goodbye. He's looking everywhere but your face, and he steps back and shakes his head. He's not going to take it. All right, it's fine. We'll give it to someone else, and we just rush in the direction. Yeah, and I put. I actually want to stop with the young man and say. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, Monsieur, I am sorry that I had to do that, but I promise you in one hour, you'll see why. Now I want to let you know you are fantastic at your job. Your sweats will eventually become great, great, beautiful, beautiful, glistening, glistening glow. 
Um, and I have also faith in the world that you will do great things. Oh, by the way, and I pull the curtain away so he can see that. But <laughs> he's yes, not he's looking at your butterflies. face. It's me, and I say, it's just keep holding on. You're doing a good job. And I just walk, run because I feel bad that. <laughs> He There's like a, a bead of sweat going down his face and he's just staring at your feet, but you hear a very like through pursed lips. Thank you. As you okay. walk away. We so you back. head to the long building. Mm-hmm. All right. You head to the long building. It's a, a bright, cheerful building with openings in the ceiling that are, are propped up. Um, there's several fires put up in here and there's what looks like almost stadium seating but it only goes up like three rows and it goes all the way along this rectangular building. And you see almost everyone from the town is in here and they're in the middle of the trial. You see the town leader who's dressed in a bright red robe that covers his shoulders and goes down. Um, it's, it's almost like a, a tabard, but lifted up. It just covers the shoulders, goes down the center and you see just bare chest and side and arms and very plain linen pants, but he's obviously a man of authority and he's covered in tattoos. Um, he's in the middle of giving a speech about how Moe's disappeared after Lawan died and how suspicious that is. And you see Moe's sitting in a chair right next to this elven woman and there's like a bonfire about between them. So what do you do? Stop! We have evidence! The meeting stops and the chief turns around and looks at you and he says, who are you? We are, I, well, I am Daisy Gamwich and we are a band of adventurers and we have evidence. We found the source of the pollution and we destroyed it. And we know that uh, she, and Daisy points dramatically at the half elf. The elven woman gasps. Has something to do with it. No, um, I never did. I never went up there. We have her on VHS. What's a VHS? Well, Leo, hippo. A hippo system. What's a hippo? And that. then I present Artemis and I say, <laughs> Artemis, show them. And so then Artemis shows. The Are her eyes like projectors or something? Yes. Yeah, so what happens is what Artemis can do, because we decided this a while back, she can project what's essentially like a 3D image, like a reel. So what you see is in just light, in various intensities of light, an image of what she recorded. It's a couple of you in front of her, your legs, and then this ruined temple. And you see this electric lighted figure of a woman reaching out and you see this ghostly arm out of nowhere. The entire audience gasps and you hear some whispers. In fact, you hear the name Gorutar a couple of times, shocked. And then she cuts to the next thing that she recorded, which is this beautiful tree. And you hear more whispers and gasps and people speaking in hushed tones about this tree and the cave and all of these sorts of things. And it seems like this is a place they maybe know of. But she shows this image of the ice spire and the spear going into it. And she pauses the recording. And in the recording, you see the reflection of the elven woman's face in this ice spire that Jacques is destroying. I can tell you, we know this man, Mose, and we know that he is a good man. Mose, you may not remember us, but we know you. He looks and very confused. <laughs> this woman is responsible. And we've destroyed the ice spire. She jumps up from her chair. I think before you say have you have something to say, I think that you should think about it before you do. And I cast fast friends again on her. I cast <laughs> fast friends on her. Because I, I don't want her to talk. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. You don't want the elven woman to talk? No, I, yeah, I'm gonna order her to say the truth if I'm able to do it. Okay. Uh, I honestly a save of 17. Okay. Well, she rolled a 10, so 
she stands up as if she's ready to declare something. You cast this on her. She's standing tensed, maybe ready to run. And she says, the spire appeared. I don't know how it got there. And she's like staring at a fixed point that she can't look away, almost like she's in a trance. She says, I went to go and look. And I knew it broke the seal. And you hear whispers again. This is a divisive point, she says. I took it. It's mine. I took it. What did you take? The amulet. And again, whispers all through the audience. And the, the chief steps forward and holds out his hand to her. And he glances at you. Jacques. Can you tell her to give it to me? Give it to him. As if fighting herself, she reaches into a pouch on her side and she pulls out a handful. It looks like gold links put together, very thick. And when she deposits something into his hand, he turns it over and it's this beautiful amulet with a giant cabochon, a bright red rock. It, it almost looks like glass. And he puts it away in a side pouch of his own and again whispers going out and suddenly people start talking they're standing up shouting saying that the temple can't be real because it's never been real and that would mean Gorutara is real and all these different things and the chief keeps putting his hands up and saying enough enough and finally they die down and, and he nods and guards who were stationed around this room step forward and they start to tie the woman up how long does Fast Friends last? It's a, an hour, you said? Um, it lasts one hour, but if she, at certain turns, you know, if she is distressed or, you know, she's doing things, she can make another wisdom save. Okay. She totally can do that. Let's make one more wisdom every save. Ti every time, you know, there's some sort of thing like that. Gotcha. Uh, she's still very much in a trance as she gets tied up with Jacques, rope. Perhaps ask her if, if Moe's had anything to do with it. Is it, are you sure? Well, we want to make sure that, I mean, we- Clear his name. To clear his name, but also okay. if he did have something to do with it, I mean, he should, we should know okay. the truth. Did uh, Moe's have anything to do with this? She looks like she's chewing her words, but eventually you hear her say, he was there, but he did not start this. What was he well, that's doing? good to know. Thank you. The rest of the trial goes very quickly, obviously, as you've brought ample evidence that whatever started this is now gone. And Moses set free. Everyone leaves the building rather quickly, and it becomes dark outside you, you exit the building and you see it's almost dusk and you realize you haven't eaten at all today and you are so hungry but a lot of the market stalls are still open and lamps are being lit outside there are beautiful paper lanterns that are being hung around and lit all in strings across the streets so that you can see where you're going and you smell fruits and spices and herbs and you see someone peddling that same lotus head that you had eaten in the dream before i'm going to purchase some food and eat all right do you purchase enough for everybody yes i'm feeling generous all i feel right. very accomplished after that trial <laughs> Daisy, daisy's daisy was very very shy as as a as a young girl and um she's finding power in her voice now she's certainly grown so daisy comes back to all of you with what the rest of you recognize 
as this lotus head that's been cut off right at the stem. And in the dream, Jock, this is all new to you, but very exciting. Uh, in the dream, this man had been seasoning it and heating it on side on a on a metal flat surface, cooking it and frying it just a little bit in oil. And when you cut into it, it's fragrant, some earthy, deep scents, but also just lousy with spices, bright and vibrant flavors that pop in your mouth and linger and burn just a tiny bit, but in oh, a good way. I really get to taste this. <laughs> Can you buy one for the butterflies? You know what? I forgot and bought Leaf one, and I know Leaf won't enjoy it. So here, one for the butterflies. Oh, there oh. we go. You, you hold on to it. The butterflies don't go over there. <laughs> Leaf just holds right. up a handful of good berries and says, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm you, really, you eat one and you're full. I really love it. It tastes <laughs> like meat pie back in Rose and Dark. <laughs> very garlicky. Yes, it is very garlicky. On, you know, scr scrubbing. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, <laughs> does anyone have interest? Maybe tonight uh, finding the pint and I need to sleep if you don't mind. It's uh, my my spells are quite spent, and um, it'd be nice to maybe I do not know Mo, uh, but it seems like you all have a connection with him, and it might be worth having a drink with him if we can. With very good timing, in fact, as you're all standing in the middle of the street, you see the doors to this long house open, and Mo steps out, and he's rubbing the end of his missing arm just around that metal plate, like it's sore. And he turns around and he's talking to someone inside the building and he nods and someone puts a hand on his shoulder. And he nods again. He looks a little more world weary than the last time you saw him. Um, like he, he's, he's been through something, but he's still the same sweet, shirtless Moe's, very broad, sharp jaw dimples when he smiles and he steps closer to you after seeing you guys and and heads up and reaches out a hand and he says i don't recognize you and i'm very sorry for that it, it seems like you know me perhaps we could get a drink a pint and um we'll, we'll explain everything okay do you want this extra lotus, fried lotus? Um, yes, I'm the starving. Do not want. Okay, good. I'm starving. He takes it with his hand and he starts to, to chomp on it. Um, you all head to a tavern where you get this like sticky, sweet alcohol that's very popular here, made from another part of the lotus. Uh, and eventually he meets up with his rabbit who looks different it looks like it's a different rabbit but he greets them and he says oh blue it's so nice to see you and he picks blue up and starts to pet blue with his free hand and he begins to tell you of what you've missed in the past five years since lawan's death and that's where we're going to end the episode <sighs> yeah. Aww. thank Aww. you all for tuning Aww. in find out more next week uh thanks to wizards of the coast for sponsoring us i'm kim doherty at kim doherty underscore spell it check it it's hard to spell <laughs> <laughs> i'm erica fermina you can find me everywhere at a style pixie and uh through those socials you can find everywhere else that i am at <laughs> i'm alice gretchen and you can find me on instagram at alice gretchen or on twitter at alice food I am Kelly Lynn D'Angelo. You can find me at Kelly Lynn Dang, D-A-N-G, everywhere. Hi, I'm Kellen Coleman, and you can find me at Kellen Coleman on The, the Things. <laughs> and I'm Rachel Seely, and you can find me at Sunny Seely on all of the things. S-E-E-L-E-Y, because I use all the E's. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. See you next time.